Hey everyone, welcome to Aeroworks Productions Drone Vlog number one. I'm Adam Andrews. And I'm Jay. And we're here to talk about the latest news, topics, equipment in the drone world. We've got some great topics for you today. What do we got today, Jay? Today we, we're going to go over, see, DJI is suing Unique uh, over their Watch Me and their Active Track mode, saying that it's too much alike to them. What do you think? Well, DJI is a big company. Uh, I don't know how that's going to work as far as uh, the lawsuit goes, but we do know that the company that's representing DJI right. has represented some big companies. Companies like Google, uh, Netflix, Amazon. Twitter, Amazon. So they're in it for, uh, they mean business, and they're in it to, uh, to win it. So we'll have to see. Uh, DJI has a lot of patents, and it's going to be interesting to see if they actually can get not only Unique to stop selling the Q line, which they've already stopped selling some of those, but the new Typhoon H, which they've really pushed out there as a brand new well, and also sense and avoid copter. In, Intel with their uh, their investment, investment in Unique, you know, exactly. sixty million dollars. So I don't think they've really been implicated yet. But I mean, that's going to have some ramifications exactly. on their, you know, on their investment there. So that's, that's going to be one to watch. Um, another big one: the FAA recently. This is really big for commercial operators. The FAA recently raised. The 200 foot blanket COA limit to 400 foot, that's a big deal for COA holders because as, uh, and we're actually commercial operators, so for us to go out in an area that we could only fly up to 200 feet, a lot of times we were at 260, 300 feet needing to do right. mapping missions, yeah. and up until this recent change, uh, that would require us to get a special COA just to fly up uh, higher than 200 feet. Right, yeah. So... It, that 400 feet is definitely going to make it easier for everybody to get out and do the work that they right. have to do. So I think and it's supposed to help the FAA because right now the FAA is just inundated Logged with all this, yeah. all this new paperwork coming out and stuff. So it's definitely going to be good for us being the operators and also, of course, for the FAA because they're never ready. The government's never ready. They're always they, behind. Yeah, yeah. We, we recently filed for a special COA to fly within some special airspace. And we were told that they're, they're about 120 days behind right now. So everything with the FAA right now, from exemption applications Absolutely. to special COA requests, super bogged down. They really got to streamline this process. They have streamlined one process, though, recently. And what was that? Well, the, the, the new registration process is one. Um, for those of you, if you remember back in Christmas time, uh, they were real hot to trot about making sure that all the hobbyists registered their hobbyist drones. And there were a lot of five dollars. A lot of people out there were against it, worried about privacy. Well, they have made one part of that easier for commercial operators and commercial operators like ourselves who had to fire file the old paper process, which still took 30, 60 days. So no more paperwork. No more paperwork. And there are some exceptions to that. Um, while you can file online and get a, it's not actually an N number, it's actually an F number, it's a long serial number looking number, uh, it does have some limitations if you are going to operate outside the U.S., right. you still need that N number, which means you'll have to go through the paper process. We actually cover both the paper process and the new online registration Absolutely. on our YouTube channel right here. Uh, so if you're looking at doing either one of those, or you're a commercial operator, or you want to learn how to get an exemption, we have information on both of those on our channel right here. Make sure you like and subscribe. And, and that's always getting updated. So, you know, we're trying to keep up with because it's ever evolving every day. So we're always trying to keep up on that. So right. uh, check that out. It's definitely something interesting. Yeah, and, and a lot of times, make sure you look at the dates on the videos because you may have come across one of our videos right. that was shot a year ago. And in drone world, that is like <laughs> 10 years. years. Right, so. Yeah. Make sure you make sh uh, check to see if there's a, an updated video or read the description. We may have a link to a newer video. Same thing with our exemption video on how to file. Um, we, we're constantly right. doing updates, and that's something that other companies who are doing that service are, are not necessarily doing. Um, and, and speaking of updates... Uh, <laughs> yeah, here there was a new uh, update for the DJI Phantom 4. The Phantom 4, And yep. which Adam here had gotten not too long ago. And uh, how did that firmware update go for you? <laughs> well, you know, we shot a video, and we'll put a link down in the description of how to update your Phantom 4. I want to say it wasn't as smooth as it could have been. They said it's supposed to be easier. Though. Super smooth, yeah. Well, it is easier in the fact that you can plug directly into your copter. The downside is that because it's required to be on the Internet or on Wi-Fi or cell service to download the update, um, the first thing everybody does is they go out to try and get that download, and they're crashing the DJI server. So... 
Um, while it, while it didn't go perfectly, we didn't we, we were able to get it done. But the biggest thing with that is you want to make sure that maybe try and do the update in off times, right. late at night, early in the morning. Don't do it at eight o'clock the first day that it comes <laughs> out because a million other people are trying to do that, and you're just going to get a bunch of errors saying cancel, download, restart, try again, and things like that. And that can be kind of frustrating. Yeah, it is. But, you know, overall, they definitely have improved the process where you don't have to do it on the SD card and take right. it and put it in there. So they're making it easier. It's just, and it's also good to wait a couple days too. You never know if there's a bug in good there idea. or something. And you can also yeah. go on some of the forums or check with us and see how the update went. Because sometimes uh, people don't like the update and you can only go back once, right. you know, back one update. So, you know, sometimes it's not always the best. That's another thing too, that good point. I recommend re uh, reading the release notes. Now, right. When you had to go to the website and download the firmware, you typically saw the release notes there, but now that you can do it completely on your tablet or mobile sure. device, people are skipping that process, and it's really important to do because the release notes are going to tell you not only what is in the firmware update, but how to do it. There was actually some a little bit of an order to how you did this particular update, depending on whether or not you update the Go app first, or if you're on an Android device or an Apple device. So it's really important to read the, those release notes because there's some important instructions in there uh, to make sure that your update is successful. So the Go app is getting more and more important in the flying of the, the new DJI products, right. right? It's not only that. Yeah, it's the way you capture your video, but it's how you program all your settings. It's also how you do updates. So it's very important not only to keep that up, app updated, um, and one, one thing that we do is we have it both on an iPad and an iPhone 6. So what right. we'll do is typically update the iPhone, which we use a little bit less. Try it out first. Make sure it works with the copter with the firmware update. If it doesn't, we have the backup of the iPad to, to fall back on. Right. Yeah, you always want to make sure that the, the update works correctly, too. You don't want to just go and take it. You want to make sure that everything is complete. And right. it does say that you completed the firmware update. Right. Right. So, guys, this is our first drone vlog. We're going to have a ton more. This is going to be a weekly thing. We haven't picked the, the exact date we'll be releasing it yet, but that'll be coming out soon. We're going to have a lot of great news and info for drones. We're going to have some new products. And what do we got here on the table, Jay? Well, this is a mat that we got from Best Team Products. And as you can see, it's an Inspire mat. Right. So we're just going to tease you with that for right now. We will do a review on it, though. So Full review. So look forward to that. And uh, check us out and on YouTube, our Instagram. Just uh, stay updated on what's going on. We're always constantly updating the videos. So it's, uh, it's, it's going to be interesting. So we'll see how it's going to go. And hopefully, if you guys would like to comment or send in some suggestions on right. what you would like to see us do, right? If you guys got, we, we, we want to hear what you guys want to hear. We want right. to hear about, you know, you need more information on a particular topic or you want to see a review on a product. Let us know down in the description and we'll do our best to make it happen. Right. So for today and drone vlog number one, I think we're all done. And uh, I think that's a wrap. That's a wrap. We'll see you <laughs> next time, guys. Thanks. Bye.